people to see what the natural drive of the dog is. You know, one of the reasons that humans selectively bred dogs was to help us. And this is one of the primary ways that dogs helped humans in the very beginning, besides helping us find game hunting, but they helped us keep our animals in a group and to move them around. And this is a real primitive behavior and uh, very harvestable in an animal like uh, Border Collie. I tell everybody who gets a pup, the worst thing you can do is let him run loose because he's going to go out there and get into trouble and learn bad habits. And you want a controlled environment when he's loose. So let him loose 10 minutes a day and make sure he minds you from the beginning. Some people will tell me, well, the dog minds after he's been loose for a half hour or an hour because he knows that you're not the boss yet. If you're the boss, he'd lend you teach him to listen the first five minutes you let him loose. That's probably the most critical, I think, from a training standpoint. You gotta, the dog has to respect you as a dominant and master. If they think they are, you lost. Notice that pup, how she darts out when one... You got to correct the dog in the act and you only want to correct him enough to get the punishment to like there. Just grab him by the scruff of the neck and tell him no. And but you want the correction to be strong enough that they straighten up and quit doing it. So you got to make it harder each time if he doesn't. You know chase behavior are herding dogs and terriers. You know they chase things because they're moving. And why do they do it? They get an endorphin release off of it. If you watch a dog, like especially you guys with Border Collies, who's running back and forth to the fence, you know, chasing bicycles or cars or birds or anything else, when they're doing that, if you look at them, their eyes are all dilated and they're like, and they're in endorphin heaven. I mean, it doesn't get to be any more fun for a dog than that. <laughs>